Good evening. This is Crime Classics. I am Thomas Highland with another true story of crime. Listen. That's a cricket. A Suffolk County cricket. And he's chirping away at a merry pace. Therefore, he's a male cricket. For among crickets, only this sex can chirp. At the present moment, this particular fellow happens to be in a hayloft in an English barn. The year is 1827, and it's spring, and it's evening, and it's warm. And if you're going to be a cricket, now is the time, for the hay lies sleek against your antenna. Oh, my, yes. Dead cricket. 120 pounds of country girl just fell on him. Girl's name, Mariah Martin, and she was a dead weight. So tonight, my report to you on The Killing Story of William Corder and The Farmer's Daughter. Crime Classics, a series of true crime stories from the records and newspapers of every land from every time. Your host each week, Mr. Thomas Highland, connoisseur of crime, student of violence, and teller of murders. Now once again, Mr. Thomas Highland. England in 1827 was between periods. A decade before, Napoleon had met his Waterloo. And a decade later, Victoria was to sit on the throne. True, in this year, which concerns us, the country was briefly stunned by the affair Lavarie, which almost cost England the continent of Australia, until cooler heads and more honest bookkeeping prevailed. And when the shuddering was done and normalcy returned, people returned to normal pursuits, which included the young folk. For instance, Mariah Martin... <laughs> A giggler, 5'2", 120 pounds, pretty, demure, and the most chuckable chin in Paulstead. Which chin chucking was being done by William Corder? Mariah, Pinklin, Pinklin Mariah. Oh, you're the one, William, you are. Twice over, Pinklin. Oh, God. Yes, you be. And sweet smelling you are, too. Oh, it is the hay you smell in the month of May. In your dilly hair. Oh, go. Oh, go. oh, and just to think, William. To think what? All the seasons from now on, from May to December, and then start a new year, and all that near and the next. What? What, what talk you? For every month, for every season... Oh, well, uh, well, no, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I have not said that, or uh, perhaps sometimes... What? I, I want to go, I, I want to leave here, I, I want to... Oh, your dilly mouth moves so sweetly and says nothing at all. You'll not go from me, William. Oh? Because you will marry me. You must marry me, William. Must I? Oh, yes, else... Else what? I will tell. I will tell what you did, William. I would. Mariah. How you stole from my poor dad. Mariah. I cannot understand how his poor money was dug up and taken away. Mariah, I want to say a word. And should I say what happened to the jail you would go, lad? Maybe hung. I heard in Ipswich they did a hanging recent to a lad which stole a heifer. Mariah, will you listen to me? And I do so love you. A thiefling, but I love you. Mariah, will you marry me? Oh, you've been trying to say it all the time. Of course I have. Of course you have. Pink Oh, gore. <laughs> I would like to read to you a description of William Corder as taken from a 19th century journal. 
He was about five feet six inches in height. He usually affected a drab greatcoat, plaid lilac handkerchief, a black dress coat and blue pantaloons, and had rather a large nose, a small face, and a ring on the little finger of his right hand. That was William Corder. Of course, since this was spring and a warm one, he took off his drab greatcoat, especially on the evening when he left Mariah and went home and sharpened a knife. Oh, he was a handy man. That's why he was so useful around the various farms in Paulstead. Everybody loved him. Everybody needed him. To mend a plow or stretch a thong, the cry went up, Hi, Billy Corder! This with smiling affection. And the next morning, when he went to the farm of his betrothed, Hi, Billy Corder! From Mariah's father. Hi, Billy Corder! From her mother. Good morning, William. A morning to each of you. You look worried, Billy. Come into the house and I'll steal you nice and with some dilly biscuits. Now, Ma. He looks weary. He be, Ma. What you been doing, Billy? A sharpening. Oh, what a sharpening? Knives. For the farmers all about. I give you a hand whenever you'd want, Billy. Harry you But I, uh... <clears throat> I uh, come this morning with another favor to ask. Oh, my. What favor, Billy boy? <laughs> Concerning... Oh, my. Uh... Oh, my. Concerning what, Billy boy? My love. My pinkling. My dilly girl, Mariah. I be losing her, Billy boy. You be good to Billy, Mariah. Now, Ma. Just be good to him, you hear? Yes, Ma. Then you be saying yes to what I'm asking? <laughs> I'm saying it. Then, uh, here's a thing. Uh, oh, a dowry thing, eh? Well, since there was the stealing, since my poor money was dug by robbers, there's not very much I have. But I am a farmer, but my ground is clay and rock. And you are a mole catcher. And I cannot run fast no more. Come here to me, Billy. Here I be. But close as a mother to a son. 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 Yes. I have a farthing put aside for Mariah and for you. Oh, tarry And uh, there's a pistol I like so much in the parlor. For what a pistol? Which I must have. Traveling as we are, Mariah and me, to London for the marriage. To London you go? To be wed? Yes. Oh, lad, oh, village is every girl dreaming. London to be married in. You're my true love, Mariah. Tonight I'll fetch you and we'll go down to London. Or better... What better could there be? The Red Barn, you know it. I'll meet you there at the crossroad. Oh, whatever you say, love. Ain't he a love, Ma? Oh, he's a love, all right. He's a real love. What are we doing back in this dark barn, Willie? Why are we not off to London? I showed you the jewels I got from Ma, Willie. I made her give me the cameo necklace, too. Now, please, can't we go to London to be wed? I do so want to wed with you, Willie. Mariah. Mariah. You know what you are? Oh. Clumsy. That's what you are. I bring you Daddy's pistol like you asked, and what do you do? It goes off in your hand. Now let's off to London, Willie. It's a bride I'm dying to be. Willie, are you there? I can hardly see you, Willie. Where are you? Here I am. <laughs> the lovey. Oh. Pink. Let's... <laughs> With the knife he sharpened last night. Then he carried Mariah down from the loft into the empty corn room. He left her there for a moment and ran down the road a piece. Uh, evening. Uh, can I uh, borrow the use of a spade? Taddy oh. And Billy Boy went back to the red barn and there he dug a hole. Six. 
By three. By three. I put Mariah in it. And filled the hole again. And Billy took the high road to London. He also took the gun, the jewels, and the farthings. Not a care had he as he whistled his way down the road. For Mariah's parents thought Mariah was with him. And in London... Step ye up, lads. I'm just a country bumpkin trying to make my way in London town. So step you up. Here we have it. Here's a pea and here's three shells from walnuts. I placed a pea beneath the shell in the middle and moved the shells about. Now, who's a brave lad? Who's a clever lad? Tell me under which shell is the pea. <laughs> oh, not for free, lad. For a wager. A pound? A pound. Now, watch your clothes. This one on the end. Ah, uh, we shall see. Ah, uh, uh, well, you lose. It was under this one in the middle. Now, let's try it again. And in six months, William Corder had enough money to purchase a house and a bakery shop, a feather bed upstairs, a parlor beneath it, and beneath the parlor, bread and buns. He needed only one more thing. So he went to the newspaper and he inserted an ad. Lady for matrimony wanted. A private gentleman, aged 24, entirely independent, whose disposition is not to be exceeded, has lately lost his family to the end of providence. If this meets the eye of any agreeable lady who uh, feels desirous of meeting with a sociable, tender, kind and sympathizing companion, they will find this advertisement worthy of notice. Honor and secrecy may be relied on. Mr. X, 68, Leadenhall Street. Here, sir, insert this in the next edition. Sir. At your service. Uh, there was an advertisement. At your service. Are you the Mr. Gent- X. Oh. I am he, if such as you are seeking him out. The advertisement said sociable. You were comely. It said tender. And your hair a shade of brown that will sweeten in the sunlight. It said kind. And hazel eyes. It said a sympathizing companion. How could such as fair as you need a sympathizing? Gentlemen. I kiss. Your end. Pink oh. <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> That's how they did it in eighteen hundred twenty seven. At least that's the way William Corder did it. Quite a handyman, wasn't he? The way he got rid of one girl and found another. And in his neighborhood, when a pipe needed mending or a bun baked, Aye, Willie Corder, the cry went up. Aye, Willie Corder! You are listening to Crime Classics and your host, Thomas Hyland. This Saturday night on CBS Radio's Gangbusters, hear the exciting true story of the Golden Horn, a kid who finds a gun and trades it for a trumpet, starts a chain reaction that leads to murder on Gangbusters' case file of the Golden Horn. That's this Saturday night on most of these same stations. Also this Saturday, you'll want to follow the latest adventure of United States Marshal Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke. Remember, Gunsmoke means Western Adventure, Saturday nights at the Star's Address. Well, spring came. And one of the nicest sights on an April day on Leadenhall Street in London was the new Mrs. William Corder. She would lean her head against her husband and arm in arm they would stroll. Willie. It's the truth, every (laughs) bit of it. When Wellington called for volunteers, I stepped out of their ranks Oh, Willie. It's the truth, Bertie. I know it's the truth, Willie. It's just that my heart is thumping, 
Because you might have been killed. Me? Oh, Willie. But, Birdie, I knew when I volunteered nothing was going to happen. I hadn't met you yet, and I had to live to do that, so... What else? Huh? What else happened to you before you met me? Well, uh, before I met... Right before I met you, I was in uh, Italy. You said France. You said France, Uh, Willie. Before France, I mean. And the Italian women, what of them, Willie? Oh, I didn't have no time to bother with them. I was on a secret mission. Oh, Willie. Now, don't you tell nobody. Brave, Willie. You happy, Bertie? Happy is as happy do. Happy do indeed. Oh, yes. Willie? Yes? The jewels you're going to sell to my brother, how come you buy them? By a gamble, a game of cards. But they're a lady's jewels. Then isn't it obvious, Duck? I gambled with a lady. In Genoa, it were, while on secret assignment. Gabbed, I was like a gypsy. I would have lost to you, too. Downy bird. Oh. Come. Hello, oh, sister. Hi, Willie Corder. Hi, lad. Nonny, brother Sidney. Twice and go to grass, brother-in-law, for what luck you had at the cards last night. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Will we cheat me at this transaction, too? <laughs> Isn't he priceless, Brother <laughs> Sidney? He's a good brother-in-law. But how good? What price will you give me for these jewels to add to your stock? Hmm. Middling goods. <sighs> you see, wife, your brother becomes a haggler when it comes to money. Be generous, Sidney. What you give us will buy a new oven. Fifty pounds. Done. For this cameo necklace alone. This other stuff... Not worth a shocked farthing. Fifty pounds, then. I'll write you out a check. daddy old. Good, brother. And of me? A duck. A dilly duck. A love. The very jewels Willie had stolen from the late Mariah Martin. And you remember where Mariah got them from. Her mother. And you remember her mother... Mariah writes such nice letters, Huey. Well, we can be proud. I never knew she could write. I guess Willie Corder's taught her lots. That's right. Mr. and Mrs. Martin were getting letters from Mariah since the very first week she was away. Once every fortnight, for a year now. Letters written on scented stationery in a feminine hand by Willie Corder. Chatty letters having to do with the shops in London. Oh, I'd like stroll Piccadilly myself sometime, in ribbons like my daughter Dee does. Newsy letters about trials and tribulations of her married life. (laughs) What you laughing? Oh, come here and read this. Mm. Here. Mm. (laughs) Or don't think that's very funny? You. You wouldn't. Warm letters. Oh, isn't that a sweet thing she says here, Huey? I miss you, Ma, she says. I miss you, Pa, she says. And how's the farming, she asks. And how's the mole catching? And the field of my father's clay and rocks. Oh. <laughs> a good one. A likely daughter. Only? Only what? Here, yeah, she says... Don't come to London, Ma, she says. Now, why would you say that? Aggie. What do you want? Mariah could not write when she left here. She writes good now. Better than me. Ah, oh, that Willie. Hey, Willie Corder, eh, lad? <laughs> Oh. I frightened you, Will. Uh, no. Oh, no, no. What were you doing? Writing. Writing what? Nothing. Now, now. Now, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to hide anything from me, Will. Oh, Pinklin, I, I wouldn't do that. Then what writing were you doing? Promise not to tell. What writing, Will? Promise. I promise. Come here. See this? Oh. The check my brother gave you. Look again. For a hundred and fifty pounds. Uh-huh. But he gave you a check for only fifty. Uh-huh. Then what you were writing... I fixed the check. 
Oh, what a joke on your brother. Hey, hey, ha, hey. Wow. Well. <laughs> Downy bird. Forgery. Not quite. Simply an extra hundred pounds. Clever. Is it? Clever. Clever, clever. It is. Isn't it? What a one. Who? What a one. What a... Now, who could that be? Uh, the tradesman, I think. Uh, let's go to the window and see. The tradesman. Huh. And see what he has for us. A new bed warmer. A new quilt. A new feather quilt. And a pillow. A new pillow. And look down there. A new bed. Oh, what a one. What a one you are. Oh, husband. Tradesman, bring them in. Bring them all in. Everything. <laughs> And later on, they chuckled about what a wonderful joke he had played on his brother-in-law, Sidney. History does not record Sidney's reaction. It's true what Bertie said. What a one was William Corder. Especially what a one he was with the quill. Not only had he taken up hiking checks, but he was still penning those letters I told you about. Only the scent had been changed. This latest letter I have here, Huey. Mariah says, should I ever be so bold as to come to London... She would not receive me. Uh, She never could write. Oh, go to sleep, old man. And according to court reports and testimony, this is what happened then. Go on. Go to sleep, old man. Then, Mrs. Martin said, she fell asleep too. Mm -hmm. Then... Wake up, Aggie. Put the tea to a bubble. Not in... Oh, I had me a fright, Huey. A terrible, awful nightmare. Pour the sheet you did. Now up to the tea lady. Dream. she wasn't in London. Dream. Up to the tea lady. Up. Yes. Yes, yes. And the next night? I never got to London, Ma. Where did you get to, Mariah? Hardly away from here. You dead, Mariah? I be dead, Ma. Oh. Oh. I be dead. I be not far from here, dead. Where? Where? I be... Wake. Wake, Aggie. Bubble the tea for me. And on the third night... Barn at the crossroads. How come you're there? He put knife to me and dug my grave. In what place? In the corn room, three feet down. And Willie did that to you? Willie did. Willie did. You fix him, Ma. You fix him, you hear? Yui! Yui! Wake up! Wake up, old man! Wake up! Murder's done. Uh, what? Our daughter, dear. She lies three feet under the corn room in the red barn. Oh, that you be done. Mariah told me in a dream, in a three-night dream, she told me, get shovel to you and dig. Up and get shovel to you. He got up all right, and he got shovel to him, and together they went down to the red barn, and they dug, and they found a skeleton, and Mariah's shawl, and Mariah's shoes, and Mariah's dress. But the thing that clinched it, the thing that made them sure, the skeleton had the four front teeth missing in its lower jaw, exactly the four teeth that had been missing from Mariah's mouth when she was alive. Police! And again and again as she ran down the road toward Paulstead. Police! 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 Which was finally heard by Constable James Lee, who viewed the body and rubbed his chin and took a trip to London, where he sought for and found William Corder who was tried and found guilty. And a half hour before he was hanged, 
wrote a letter in his own hand on unscented paper and, of course, signed in his own name. Dear Birdie, good wife, I am fully aware of the shame and disgrace which I must have cost you. So that there be some vestige of pride remain, such as a woman should have for her husband, I suggest you bury me in the finest vestment obtainable, such as silk. My coffin, I do pray you for your own sake, should be of mahogany, with moulding of silver. A cherubin on my tombstone of marble, with some fitting sentiment such as, Willem Corder, of sweet and gentle memory, though not innocent of deed, I am innocent of heart. Goodbye, dear wife. Willem Corder. On the scaffold there was some embarrassment because the trap would not work. Corder, who was, you'll remember, a very handy man, fixed it. But after the trap was sprung, it took him 12 minutes to die. So he probably didn't do a very good job. In just a moment, Thomas Highland will tell you about next week's crime classic. William Corder, tonight's crime classic, was adapted from the original court reports and newspaper accounts by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. The music was composed by Bernard Herman and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. And the program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Thomas Highland is portrayed on radio by Lou Merrill. In tonight's story, Richard Peel was heard as William Corder, Betty Harford as Mariah, Alma Lawton as Bertie, Jeanette Nolan as the mother, Joseph Kearns as the father, and Donald Lawton as Sidney. Gil Warren speaking. And here again is Thomas Highland. Next week, Edinburgh, Scotland, during the rainy season of the year 1826. We will concern ourselves with used goods, shoes, cat skins, and corpses, to name a few. The case in question is listed in my files as, If a body need a body, just call Burke and Hare. Thank you. Good night. CBS, CBS, CBS. Radio's gonna follow you, follow you. Radio that's best. <laughs>